Hello there. Welcome to a video on linear relationships and in this video we're learning all about how to graph lines. We'll go through the whole process. Graphing lines. Now a linear relationship, you can see the word line in there somewhere. <laughs> a linear relationship is formed by a set of points, uh, x and y values, that uh, create a straight line when they're plotted on, uh, on the number plane. And so we'll have a look at that whole process. If we're asked to graph uh, this particular line equation, y equals 2x minus 1, there's a whole process we go through. Now that uh, y equals 2x minus 1, that is, uh, we'd call that the rule or the linear equation. It's uh, the arrangement of numbers and letters that relates the x values and the y values together. So we'll check this all out. And this is a table of values that we have here. The table usually gives us our x values, or we can make them up ourselves if we like. But usually they're around the zero mark and a couple of um, numbers after that as well. This is a typical table of values. And uh, what we'll uh, try and do is we'll fill in the table of values with some y values for each of those x values according to the rule that's up the top here. Now let's have a look at that rule a little bit more closely y equals 2x minus 1. Now the 2 and the x are together and as you'll know from your algebra studies that uh, when things are beside each other um, in this sort of thing there's an invisible multiply in between. So we'll consider that that 2 is multiplying by whatever the x value is and then 1 is being taken away from that and uh, if we double whatever x is and we take 1 off that total we'll get the y value for each of them. So I'll leave a set of brackets there. Now one at a time, I'm going to sub in the x values, just one at a time, don't try and do it more than once, um, into the rule and find a y value for each x value. I'll show you how we work it. We'll go through fairly slowly here. So our first x value we're going to consider is x equals minus 1. So we'll place that up into the brackets. We'll multiply that by 2 and then we'll take away 1 from that. Now 2 times minus 1, you can check this on your calculator if you're not sure, 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, minus another 1 on the number line will get us to minus 3. So by subbing in that x value of minus 1, we've got a y value, according to the rule, of minus 3, and we'll put that y value down into our table of values to start filling in our table of values. So with a different x uh, value to put in now, we'll get a different y value for it. When we put 0 in the bracket up there, 2 lots of 0 is 0, minus 1 is minus 1. So that's created a different y value because we had a different x value. It's following the same rule, but we've got different inputs and different outputs here. OK, now it's the time for us to sub in the next value of 1 into the bracket and see what happens to it, see what y value results from that. 2 lots of 1 is 2, take away 1 is 1, so that goes in there. Now we have uh, created three y values, one at a time, from putting in different x values. And uh, we've set up a bit of a pattern here. Um, so at this point, you you've got a bit of a choice. You could just keep the pattern going. If, you if you're pretty sure of your answers here, let's have a look at the pattern that's been created by the first three y values that were uh, resulting from us putting the x values into the rule. Um, if we compare the first um, y value and the second one, we can see that we've added two. And then if we compare the second y value and the third y value, you can see that we've added another 2. So if we keep that pattern going, we'll get our fourth y value of 3 by adding 1 plus 2. And if we keep that pattern going and add another 2, we can find that, uh, that fifth y value there. So that's a choice there. If you're pretty confident of your working out and you've started a pattern going, that's uh, one of the features of linear relationships that as you move across from one x value to the next, the same sorts of things will be happening between the y values that have been happening in the previous few examples. So that's a possibility. We could do that if we wanted to, or we can just keep subbing in our y values uh, like we had been into the rule. So we'll just double check both ways here. Uh, 2, if that gets subbed in there, 2 twos are 4. Take away 1 is 3. Uh, I think that's, yeah, that's what we got last time as well by following the pattern. And if we sub in uh, 3 as our final x value, each time the x values just get put into the rule and a certain y value results. 2 times 3 is 6. Take away 1 is 5. And we'll 
complete our table of values there. So that's our table of values done. Now I notice I said that part of the way through there we could keep the pattern going if we're confident or we could just keep subbing in each x value and getting a y value for it. So you'll get the hang of that pretty soon I'm sure. So we've created uh, that set of uh, x and y values that we call the table of values. Now at this point, uh, not every teacher gets their students to do this, but I find it's, uh, it's hard for students to picture an x and y value that are paired up here without rewriting them. Now it only takes a few seconds to rewrite them. I'd suggest strongly that I'd recommend that you write each pair of x and y values out horizontally like a point minus 1 minus 3 because in the next step we're going to be plotting them on the number plane and so it just helps our brain to write them out in um, a version that we're used to. We're used to seeing these um, ordered pairs or coordinates uh, horizontally and so I like to uh, have my students just quickly write them out. Uh, so we're writing each of those out with an x value first and a y value second. Can you see for the third one, both of them are actually one here, so that's not a good example, is it? Uh, but we're just writing them out uh, horizontally in this uh, this uh, this uh, second last one here. You can see that we have an x value of 2 and a y value of 3, so we'll write the, um, the 2 value down first and uh, indicate that that's the x and that's the y. So writing them out horizontally just helps our brain a little bit because then I know what's coming up, you see. <laughs> we'll plot each of the x and y values on the number plane. Okay, so we'll go through uh, what I've described in the previous um, video about plotting points on the number plane. I'm pretty sure you would have seen that before, um, but you can have a look at the previous video if you, if you haven't. But uh, we'll plot each of those points. I'll just do it quickly. Minus 1, we go across the left and down 3 to get to uh, minus 1, minus 3. 0, um, it doesn't go left or right at all, but we go down 1 for minus 1 there. We're just plotting those on the number plane. If you haven't seen that before, have a look at the video um, that precedes this one. So we're just plotting those points on the number plane. For, to get to 2, 3, we've gone across 2 and up 3. And to the plot, our final point there is 3, 5. So we've uh, positioned those on the number plane according to where they are. Now if we join the dots with a bit of an arrow, um, that'll be the line that is produced by that rule, y equals 2x minus 1. And to indicate that that line is uh, following that rule, y equals 2x minus 1, we will label that line, particularly if we've got more than one line on a set of number planes there, on a number plane. Uh, very good to uh, label it and know which one's which. Okay, so quite a bit done there. So it's almost like that uh, this rule is a bit like a factory where we're putting in various uh, ingredients and we're getting out different ingredients or different results. So it's a bit like a number machine, this rule here. We're putting in different x values, we're getting out different y values for each of them. We're turning them into points that we can plot on the number plane. We'll join the dots and create that line and uh, we'll have graphed that line. So there's a few things to notice here. If we compare the rule to our final result over here, there's some, some very good similarities we can draw out from it. You notice that uh, the line crosses the y-axis, that red line that we created, crosses the y-axis at a value of minus 1. And our rule has a minus 1 as the final number there. We call that the constant. So they are related every time, especially when, well, <laughs> only when we're in this format of y equals some, uh, some number in front of x and another number tacked on the end there. That, that, this number here, the circled, whatever that number is, is the y-intercept, we call it. Okay, so that's a special thing to notice there. The y-intercept, we'd say, is minus 1. And the y-intercept is where the line meets the y-axis. Okay, so that's an interesting thing to notice as well, the relationship between where the line crosses the y-axis and that number that's in our rule. Okay, there's another thing to notice. To go from one point to the next on the line, to get from this point here to this point here, for example, we make a regular repeated move here. We would rise 2 from that point and move to the right 1. We'd say we'd rise 2 and run 1. Running is going across ways, rising is obviously going upwards. So uh, to get to the next point, we would rise 2 again and run 1. Rise 2, 
run one. So that relationship to get to the next point along the line that's on our grid here is a very key relationship. And just as we had a bit of an indication of where this line would cross the y-axis by this second number in our rule, we can have a look at that first number in our rule, the number that's in front of the x there, we call it the coefficient of x. If we put that in fraction form, now a whole number like 2, if you put that into fraction form we would write 2 over 1. Okay, now that, there's no surprise there, no coincidence, that that is also the, um, the what we have to do to get to the next point. It describes the slope of the line or the gradient of the line. We'd say the gradient of this line is 2 or 2 over 1 and it describes the rise of 2 and a run of 1 that we just got through saying we'd have to do to get from one point on the, on the uh, line across to another point on the line that we plotted. So that's the slope or the gradient of the line. So we've got two things to notice from our rule here. We can have a look at any rule that's formatted in this way, y equals some number in front of x and another number there, and we can know where that line crosses the y-axis, and we can also know a bit of how, about uh, the slope of the line, or the gradient of the line. So the gradient of a line is the, the, the relationship between the rise, how, how far up you have to go, uh, and the run, how far across you have to go. So we'll learn more about that later. But there's a couple of uh, interesting things to notice from our rule and, uh, and noticing how that rule has produced um, the line when we graphed it. Okay, so we had a look at a rule. We subbed in numbers from a table of values to fill in the table. One at a time we subbed them in and got an X, a Y value for each of the X values. Once we got that table of values completed, we uh, I had a recommendation for you to write, write all those points out in horizontal version because I knew that we were going to then plot each of those X and Y values on the number plane. Then we can join the dots. We would label the line just to make sure we know which one's which if we have more than one line, and that's about it. And we did have an extra couple of things to notice, that there was a special relationship between where the line crossed the y-axis and one of the numbers in our rule, and also the fraction version of that other number in the rule told us a little bit about how steep the line was or what we have to do to move from one point on the line to the next point on the line. So lots of things to learn from that uh, y equals mx plus b format. Lots of things to uh, learn from graphing lines and we'll see some more in the next video as well. Thanks for watching. Watch that over again if uh, some of that was a bit too quick or a bit confusing. But I hope that helps and there's lots of videos to see at peterblakemaths.com. See you next time for some more on that uh, graphing of lines, y equals mx plus b format. See you next time. Bye.